Welcome to Bitcoin Stuff. Oh boy, it's time for another edition of Cult Member Conversations! So, uh, my first tweet is from Giacomo Zucco, and I apologize for mispronouncing his name in my previous video. And uh, here he is saying that he objects to the fact that I am ridiculing his witch hunting efforts. If there could be a more cult member tweet, I, I don't know what it would be. It does not occur to him that a protocol which is vulnerable to ridicule is probably not a very good protocol. Now this is pretty amazing. What happens is Paul basically gives Giacomo a script and Giacomo follows the script. Paul basically says that Giacomo is irrationally risk averse and Giacomo proceeds to uh, behave like a person who is terrified of change without noticing that Paul has already predicted his behavior and uh, that he has not answered Paul's objection. And Paul is a little bit obscure here, but in order to uh, read his script, you have to assume that uh, the word assume has the lowest precedence and the equal sign has one, one precedence level above that. And then every, everything else has a higher precedence. Okay, so assume risk is zero, which is equal to don't do anything unless it has no cost, which is equal to don't eat unless free. He, he's saying that it is, it is not riskless to remain inactive. There are risks of not doing anything. Okay, there are risks to, to standing still. Whereupon Giacomo goes on to be irrationally risk averse in exactly the way that Paul describes. Because, see, he's acting like he is afraid of risk and not showing any interest in going out hunting. He does not appear to think that there is any risk to standing still. You can't really even tell what the argument is about here. Uh, it's like a perfect archetypical exchange between uh, Paul and Giacomo. As it happens, they were arguing about uh, drive chains, which are uh, an invention of Paul. They're an implementation of uh, side chains for Bitcoin, uh, which would greatly enhance the, uh, the creative potential of Bitcoin. What Paul is basically saying at the bottom there is that from the perspective of someone who doesn't leave the main chain, drive chains might as well not exist because the, the transactions that represent going in and out of the drive chain are uh, ordinary Bitcoin transactions. When you go on the drive chain, you're at your own risk and, and it, is, it is up to the people on the chain to make sure that uh, the transactions match up. The, the Bitcoiners don't need to care about that. I noticed that in the next clip, it might sound like uh, Lemon is uh, being dangerously neglected in the background. And uh, what happened was uh, he wanted me to spend some time with him, but he didn't want to spend some time with me where I was sitting at the computer. He wanted me to follow him back to where he was uh, and spend time with him there. So that's, that's the problem. And as you can see, I have joined him uh, over here where he wanted to be so he is now okay okay so this next one is awesome because uh, it really goes into Poe's law territory for me uh, and and Poe's law that that means that you are not sure if something is satire or if it is it is serious and uh, it's really good to get into Poe's law territory with cult members because that is that means you're breaking through like if you can get people to say things that are, are really, really kind of ridiculous, that means, that means they're really starting to think. So, um, so that's a good sign. Now, uh, what he's saying here is that I am like the annoying trumpet player and the developers are like the girl desperately trying to ignore me. Like, I, I would say that investors will tend to prefer investments that they feel like they control. And so that means you are more valuable if you uh, do what the investors say. 
So, so someone who is trying to ignore the investors, to me, is someone who is depicting the inferiority of the, uh, the investment. And that's what I think is interesting about these Bitcoin core cult members is that they really seem to think that investors would prefer an investment that uh, they don't control over one that they do control. And then Infernal accuses me of cult envy. Like, uh, I guess he's saying that I want to be the cult leader uh, and I'm, uh, I'm jealous that uh, the developers are the cult leaders. And uh, I kind of agree with that. And uh, I would say that I am probably the best cult leader in Bitcoin after Mercia Popescu. And... Um, if, if we are going to have a cult, I'm going to be the cult leader. That's, that's pretty much how I feel about cults. Uh, I don't think that this is really something that I aspire to a lot. But, uh, but if, if, if it were offered to me, I, I, you know, I, I would take it. If a bunch of people came up to me and they said, uh, you know, please let us worship you, I would be like, uh, yeah, okay, uh, but what's in it for me? You know what I mean? I, I would I would prefer that we didn't have a cult, but if we are going to have a cult, I think uh, that uh, yeah I I would like to be the cult leader. So you know uh, Infernal, as I said, went into Poe's Law territory, where you're not sure whether it's serious or satire, and it, it he produced something that that I agree with, something that I identify with a lot. And Giacomo also identifies with this. See, he, he agrees. He says that, um, that cult envy is a very accurate and complete description of the problem. And, um, and he says that I am hopeless and sad. And, and, and he is, <laughs> he is implicitly agreeing here that there is a, is a cult. And in fact, uh, below he, he, says that cults are good. So, um, so he agrees that there is a cult and, uh, he thinks that we should have a cult. So my response to this is basically to be the laziest cult leader ever and to just like, uh, act like I am, I am hypnotizing him in, uh, the, um, the most ridiculous possible way that is so obvious that, that you couldn't possibly really be hypnotized by it see so i'm acting like like a cartoon character who is trying to hypnotize him like a cult leader and you notice he liked the tweet so maybe that means it's working and uh this is this is my uh my furry character and this is him as byzantine jesus and uh byzantine jesus is my favorite jesus because he's the best hypnotist so uh, i have i have a, a picture here to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so next we're gonna continue a little bit from the earlier conversation with Giacomo, just showing you uh, what happened. Uh, Paul basically says that uh, if you oppose experimentalism, you eventually must uh, suppress creativity, which is how I interpret uh, joining the evil team. Whereupon uh, Mr. Hoddle accuses Paul of uh, being exploited by a female appetite. And uh, to, to me, the problem with this response is why is Paul sort of the one who is being treated like someone who should leave society and uh, form his own organization rather than uh, someone who, who should be the leader? Because to me, like his entire uh, way of thinking and overall approach is obviously uh, superior so uh maybe maybe we should have a a process whereby uh the the more intelligent people come on top without having to make an entire fork and maybe we should we should all decide what the uh developers are going to work on together first uh before the the development work begins which is what uh, would happen uh, if we used a futures market. So then uh, what happens is I basically was extremely high when I responded to him. 
and I just didn't really uh, get what Mr. Hoddle was saying at all. And I was so focused on being, you know, the cartoon cult leader that I, I just didn't uh, didn't get what he was saying. Really, I didn't, and I didn't respond to to what he was saying. I, I was kind of like following a script, just like uh, Giacomo was earlier. Uh, so here, Mr. Hoddle rightly asks if I had a stroke. Uh, and I desperately tried to uh, try to recover here, and it's a good thing I did because I caught a big one. Adam Beck made the mistake of talking to me again. So uh, Adam says that uh, in the short term, we need to look at Schnorr signatures, which would allow uh, a single transaction to redeem multiple outputs with a, a single signature that uh, that can be checked in uh, the same amount of time, no matter how many outputs are redeemed, among other properties. And he says there's uh, a shortage of uh, programming labor in Bitcoin. Now, first of all, an invention that enhanced the uh, creative potential of Bitcoin certainly would attract more programmers. And second, th this is kind of like the argument that a, uh, a uh, socialist central planner would make because uh, the central planners always have shortages of everything because there is no, uh, no, no profit system in the economy which is enabling uh, people to communicate what things they need the most to, to one another. You have to spread your, your eye over everything and learn about everything everywhere in order to create the perfect... Uh, central plan. Whereas if you enable people to maximize their own creativity, then uh, they they pretty much work things out on their own and uh, they, they are not working at odds with you anymore. And uh, this is the, the socialist calculation problem. If you've read any Ludwig von Mises, although we're not literally talking about socialism here, but we are talking about people who think that they can construct an overarching system uh, when a market would be uh, substantially more efficient. And I do this thing with Adam Beck where uh, I kind of imagine that I'm like the supervillain and he is like uh, the sidekick. So I'm like a uh, Rasputin and he is like uh, Bartok the Bat. Or maybe I'm like uh, Dr. Frankenstein and he is like uh, Igor. And to me that makes sense because I think he's like someone who knows everything about stitching a body together. But uh, I'm the one who knows about bringing it to life, which is the more important information. And I just want to kind of establish this sort of thing as a precedent for when people realize they should have been listening to me all along. Because then I, I think that that means I can continue to behave this way. And so uh, basically I, uh, I tell Adam that uh, Paul should be in charge. So he's talking about what he thinks the priorities should be. And, and I'm saying, I'm talking back to him about what the shape of the hierarchy should be. So I'm telling him Paul has better ideas about how to make efficient use of programming labor. Anyway, I'm going to try to lay off Adam in the future because I've been uh, picking on him a lot over the course of this series. I think he's had enough for now. I think he really is just a very nice person, but he just doesn't get Bitcoin. Back to Infernal's picture here. I'm going to show you something that I made on Twitter recently, which is kind of a response to this. It Mick Campbell coin is sort of asking Paul about whether he should try to get uh, Bitcoin Cash to implement drive chains. And, uh, and Paul says, I don't know about doing anything to get them to do it, but it would be a good idea. Uh, and that's that's kind of the way that I talk to uh, people in Bitcoin. I, I just kind of like talk about hypothetical situations and uh, I, I, I talk about their uh, their benefits. I talk about what what is to their benefit, and and that's kind of like what Paul is doing here. So my uh, my response to him is to say that people will notice that your knowledge is the most valuable more quickly if you don't try getting them to do anything. 
just conspicuously point out how self-defeating they are for not following you and act like you are already the leader. That's the prediction market way. See, because um, if somebody were to just act like he was the leader, that might look crazy. You see what I mean? So I would say somebody who does that is making, making a prediction that he will be the leader because he is kind of uh, risking his uh, reputation on it. So it, it is like he is saying, um, I don't need to worry about looking like a crazy person now because I'm going to be the leader later. And, and this is kind of how, how investors think, okay? They, they, make, uh, they make bets about uh, the future. And I think that somebody who is clearly making, making a bet on, uh, on himself in that way is, is someone who is uh, noticeable because most people can't afford to do that. You know what I mean? Most people can't afford to, to risk their reputation. I, I would say that I am kind of creating the prediction market uh, by teaching people how to use it. So anyway, there you go. That's uh, Cult Member Conversations 2. Uh, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed.